G'day and welcome back to Sam After Work. Today I want to do a overview on the TACOM HQ um, Tarak family, I think. <laughs> the Alpha, the Bravo, the Charlie and the Delta. Um, most people probably um, know about this, sort of run into it in different places. Um, there's a lot of people who still ask questions, what is that in the front of the scope? Um, and I suppose I just wanted to give a bit of an overview as to what they are, what they're doing and all the rest of it. Um, start off with this is my 243, it's back to a standard barrel at the moment. Um, it's set up with a, in a, in a um, what's well XLR chassis and I have on top of it the tracked scope. So it's the tracked scope, mount the Charlie track piece on the front of it, which is, which is the magnetic base, which works for, not needed for all of it, we don't need it for any of it actually, but it's a choice and it works and fits on there nicely. It's grey, same colour as most of the rest of the stuff. Um, and all I had to do to fit that is I removed the sunshade, put this on, it's got a little lockdown screw on the top of it. But to start off with, let's go with the Alpha. We'll go um, Alpha numerically. Um, what we've got, the Alpha system here um, is a, I'll bolt it on the front and I'll go through and explain what it is. What their systems are, are all about uh, bending light, not distorting it, bending it and giving you a precise change in where the light is traveling. What's that for? Well, elevation adders is what it's all about, adding elevation, um, be that MOA or mil, doesn't really matter, we're talking adding, ele uh, adding elevation, which is the same sort of thing we do when we adjust our turrets on our scope. I'll put that back down to zero. When we adjust our, our turrets on our scope, we actually adjust the aiming point. We actually aim, uh, adjust the reticle which also means we start to look through a slightly different angle in the scope. We look through a different position for where we're adjusting the reticle to. Um, and what we're doing to do that is when we wind up, we are adding elevation. So if I went zero, I wind up at 8M, 10 MOA, 2 mil, whatever it is, I wind up, I'm adding elevation. So that's adding elevation. So that's one way of doing it. And that is the natural, normal way of doing this stuff. The next way to, or another way to do it, I should say, is by changing where the light's coming from in the front of it. So you end up with the same thing. If this is at zero, I wind it up to 8 MOA, I've just changed where I'm looking. This coincidentally is an 8 MOA elevation adder. We clip it up, that changes the angle and adds 8 MOA. So what that does for us is that then with this zeroed, I've got the ATMOA. Now, why would you do that? There's various reasons to want to do that. Um, a classic one, not really my sort of shooting because I don't have that, I don't do that sort of stuff. But if you're talking subsonic ammo to um, supersonic ammo, where you have it zeroed in your supersonic ammo and then you want to go to your subsonic ammo and you coincidentally it lines up to what you're doing and this all depends on all the different features and how much you can custom order these things this is all conversations to have with um, TACOM but that would instantly click that up <coughs> pardon me and then give you the same zero point with a lot slower ammo that's a way of doing it or you've, you've got it set up for short range and you want to be able to go up for a long range sort of stuff there's a set 500 yards, 400 meters, 500 yards, 600 yards, that type of thing. And you can go from 100 yards staff down here to click up here and you're still zero hold and you're out at the long range for what you're doing with that particular rifle. Bit more your tactical side of things in the, in the AR-15, in, in that sort of shooting, that sort of stuff, bit more for the setup there. But that's the design of this concept. And the reason for the conversation is it's the alpha. It's the beginning of the alphabet on that side of things. Smart system, and I can imagine it would work really well. Not really suited to what I do, but you get where they're coming from. So next one, you've got to obviously put it on a quick release as well. This one's actually on a little screw-on thing. But anyway, that's the alpha. Now the Bravo. This is um, basically, it's a angled piece of glass in there doing the same thing, uh, be it a prism, be it a wedge, be it whatever you want to call it, but it's actually glass that has an angle to it which then distorts the light. This one here can mount on the same on the front there or as I've got it set up here, it's got a magnetic base which means it can clip to the front. Plunk, clunks on the front there. This one is 90 MOA. Now these I think you go to their website, you'll see the sizes they can get them in, and you can also custom order them. I think up to 200 MOA is how far you can actually go. So that's going to be 60 mil. So they can go a long way. Um, they go on the frontier and they do the same thing. Very fixed number. 
and we'll have to check and see how that is. But from the, the rudimentary check I've done, it's perfect. And from what I expect of those guys, it's going to be absolutely perfect. But 90 MOA, and it does the same thing. If this is at zero, that clips on, I've got 90, instantly 90. The way I use these, and I use a similar system I use in the Night, Night Force Wedge, and that's another controversial thing I'm not to get into, but similar bit uh, in the way of the, the technology is the same. This is a different mounting system. These, these, are, these, like I said, are custom. You can't do any of that sort of stuff with the Night Force stuff. But the way I use these is if I've got a shot that is 170 MOA, that's what the maths is on that side of things, then I can set up my scope to dial up, and it depends what you got. This one has a hundred minutes of elevation. I've got it set up in, a, in an air attack base, so I could end up with 170 minutes of elevation. Um, but let's say I've just got a scope, the setup that gives me 100 minutes, and I've got a 170 minute shot. I can dial this up to 80 minutes and clip on this fellow on the front here, and I've got 170 minutes, done. Straight up, easy rig, nice and easy. Nice light system, mounted on there, easy. Putting it away, that's nice and easy too. Off it comes, done, back in the back in the box, however you got it type thing. So very simple system on that format. Clips on there. There is some screws to mount on the side here to make sure that stays there nice and stable and strong. Um, with this, the weight of it and that sort of stuff, you'd need heavy recoil, that was an issue because this is quite a light unit. Uh, but just being really thorough, yes, that you could do that side of things for sure. So that is this system here and that's the Bravo. The next one up in the list, is the Charlie. You've seen it on my channel before. Um, same but different. The Alpha and the Bravo both have an angled, a triangle side profile to it. So a wedge of, of light, of, of, of glass, of, uh, I don't know what it is. I'm, I haven't done the research, but it'll be a very high quality resin glass slash whatever it is. Something that is got perfect um, light transfer. Um, so that's how they work and that angle changes the angle, the angle of the wedge changes the angle of the light. This system here has some added advantage to it. Um, probably a, probably a, there's a tiny, some tiny negatives in, attached to these two and some real positives attached to, in, in, in reference to these two. The negative would be a little bit heavier and the negative slash positive is it's adjustable so you can move it. Uh, that's a really good thing, but it also means you've got to set it up and precision and getting it exactly right, measuring that sort of stuff takes a little bit of work to figure all that out, but doable. So still a very good thing and it's adjustable. From zero to over 600 MOA of adjustment. Um, how's it work? It has two mirrors, one on the top here and one on the bottom here. So two mirrors shaped like that. The, the light is coming in, bouncing down and going through here very high quality mirrors so no perceptible notice or lack of quality in the vision um, and the adjustability side of things makes them awesome you know in the fashion of you really can set it up i adjust mine all the time i largely set it up at 200 200 moa for a lot of my stuff maybe 250 and i've gone up to 400 moa depending on what i'm doing um, the height side of things, because they actually go up, it gives you the advantage of being able to see over the top of your barrel to a certain degree. Because as you imagine, as you're adjusting up your elevation more, your barrel's going up and you're still looking straight at your target, which is over on the horizon. So as your barrel goes up, you start to, at a certain point, the barrel will get in the road of your image. So having your elevation point or the, the, the light coming in point higher means you can go up further. So a really good feature on that side of things. It also, to the largest degree, keeps you above barrel mirage. So the, 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 the heat, the air pressure differences of a hot barrel that affect your light, this is looking over the top of it. So a really smart, pardon me, a really smart system and something that the moment you're going into the, the top end of ELR and moving into ultra long range, so ULR, um, these, this is the fella to go with. They're really, really good at that, doing that side of things. Scope stays at the same height, everything stays the same, and they can really go, well, listen, to a degree as far as the eye can see, um, and a little bit past that. Um, and I suppose that moves into the next bit of it, and that is the Delta. This doesn't actually, this isn't an elevation adder, which the other three are. This is to get you around that bit I was just talking about, which is once you go further still, 
especially with a longer barrel and a bigger muzzle brake, but it, just long barrels start to get in the road. This is only a, this is just for display. Well, this is my 24 inch, sorry, my 243 with a 24 inch barrel with a, one of my three port muzzle brakes on it. You go into where you've got a 33 or 36 or a 38 or a 40 inch barrel, which some of the big stuff have, and, and a muzzle brake on the end of it, then all of a sudden you, you realize that your angle of being able to look over things has just been reduced. You can't get anywhere to the near the same angle. So the smart John Baker at Tacom HQ came up with another light bending thing, but it doesn't actually do any more than bend the light sideways. If you ever look on top there, those two dotted lines are the angles of the mirrors. It is adjustable, they fine tune it at factory to make sure it's perfect. But what that does is take the light in from the side of the barrel and then send it to the scope. Doesn't distort it at all, it is exactly the same aiming point, it doesn't change elevation, but it gets you around your barrel. So we'll put this on so you can see what I'm talking about. There it is clipped on. We notice it's canted forward, it's made for shooting a long way. You don't use this to shoot 100 yards. This is made to shoot in the two miles, really three miles and four miles and five miles. You'll see this sort of stuff when they go to the extreme, going way too far. Um, but it's canted forward already to allow for the fact that your, your barrel will be up and it's trying to look at target. And there may be other places you could use this system by itself. But what it's designed for is to use with the Charlie. When the Charlie's leaned right over, it's all set up in heights and that sort of stuff. But when the Charlie is trying to get you to the 400 MOA, 500 MOA, 600 MOA shots, the delta is the bit that gets you around the barrel. So anyway, that's the little list of this stuff. Um, some very smart um, and very innovative ways of um, getting around that problem. Skin of that cat, as I like to say. Uh, pull that one off the front. These systems, I, I, this one here also can mount to the front rail for, and you'll see me shooting like that and sometimes when I want to do that side of things. This system's also made to be able to bolt those two together. So they bolt together on that thing here and then you can just clip on your Charlie and your Delta onto one rail in the front there, all nice and simple. So lots of different ways of doing that, but that is the little list. That's what we're actually talking about in the Charlie Track stuff or sorry, the, the not Charlie Turak, in the Turak stuff, or the, the um, TACOM HQ optical range. This is the stuff we're talking about. Very smart way of skinning that cat um, and then done a really good job with how they put it all together. So it was just a video to show you what, um, what that range is, how it works and the basics of it. I, will, I was hoping to get it earlier to use in our last season. We'll use this in the upcoming season so you can actually get to see. Um, I'm really excited to use the Bravo in places where I can just clip it on, that sort of thing, so we're excited to use that. And for the big stuff, when we get out and do that sort of things to the likes with the, the 50 BMG, which needs a lot of elevation, very big nozzle brake and that sort of stuff, then it's really going to get to where everything sits back down close to the rifle and it's all set up to do that sort of stuff as well. Anyway guys, I think that's about a list of what i got to tell you. Um, I hope it makes some sense. Thank you John and Jacob over there at TACOM HQ for sending this sort of stuff. I hope I've done it justice and we can do it justice in the way of showing it off and um, we're showcasing it and using it um, and get the benefits of using it as well. Anyway guys, thank you. Thank you very much and we'll catch you next time.